Alright, so we're back to doing this decluttering thing, and today's powders, as you can probably tell from the powders that I have on my desk, which I understand um, is a lot, but powder is one of those things where you end up kind of accumulating um, because you're always searching for the one magic powder that will somehow erase all your pores and not pick up on dry patches and not sink into fine lines, and this magical powder does not exist, so you end up with this, or you do if you're me. And crazy makeup person. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but we're gonna we're gonna work through that embarrassment and just uh, try to parse this out into things that I am actually going to use and things that I really should give away or sell. So yeah, we're gonna start with loose powders. This is a fairly large category for me because it is definitely my preference in terms of powders. I find I like the finish of loose powders better. Um, it doesn't cake up as much as pressed powder does, and it doesn't have all the extra oil and binders and stuff to kind of add more stuff to your face. So definitely the category I have I think the most from and that I'm probably most likely to keep. So the things that I know for sure I'm going to give away is the um, mineral makeup. Um, I do not like the Bare Essentials Bare Minerals um, formulation I find. It kind of looks almost waxy on the skin. It has this weird like reflective quality that I just think starts looking quite unnatural. Uh, plus it makes my skin itch so there's that. And by the same token, I'm going to get rid of these little bare mineral type samples. The one I am going to keep though is the peach color corrector from Everyday Minerals because I do like to use this occasionally to set my um, concealer because it's got that peach undertone. So everything else is going to go away. Okay, next up from the loose powders is this um, very kind of similar category, which is all the sort of silica based ones that um, have that very, very fine like very silky texture to them that sort of disappears into the skin. The one downside about all of these powders except for the colored tinted ones is that they can have a bit of that white cast on the skin if you use them too much or if you have just a deeper skin tone. I find the white can still kind of show up a little bit and just kind of needs to be buffed in. The other major downside to these is that they're not super great for dry skin, um, especially the HD Makeup Forever one, which is just pure silica. Silica is basically um, a drying agent, so it's great if you want to control the oil and if you need to have like a very matte finish, but if you have dry skin, it's probably the worst thing you can use. Um, but I mean, I do like it uh, for having that sort of velvety matte finish and for setting um, my foundation in general. And the ones that are from MAC, um, the Prep and Prime CC line that have a bit of a tint are actually really great. This one kind of has this slightly tawny kind of almost golden uh, sort of undertone to it, which is really lovely if your skin is looking kind of gray or if your foundation is maybe just a touch too beige. And then this one has a violet undertone, which is nice if you have olive toned skin that can maybe look a little bit sallow or sickly, especially in the winter. So I do like both of these a lot. If I were to keep, let's say, only two out of all of these, I would probably keep these two. However, they're all quite good, including the original formula Prep and Prime, the NARS Light Reflecting Powder, same kind of concept, the Graftobian, um, this is the HD Lux Cashmere Setting Powder in Coconut Cream. Um, I find the function very, very similarly. Now, obviously, I don't need three of the Makeup Forever HD ones. This is one that I bought. Um, these two are like variously sized samples. So I'm going to actually uh, probably sell this one off and give this one away because I just don't use it often enough to have a big jar of it. I'm quite fine with this little guy. This is actually really nice too for setting um, the under eye as long as I don't take it kind of out over to where I have kind of like more fine lines underneath my eye. But just like in the inner corner, I find it's really nice because it doesn't cake up. So yeah, definitely keeping those guys. Then I do have these powders also from Makeup Forever. Um, this is their super matte um, powder um, and it does have a tint. Um, so I like that to have as an option for a more mattifying powder. I don't use it super frequently, but it's a loose powder. It's not going to go bad, um, not for a long time anyway. So I don't feel bad keeping it because I do occasionally like to have a more matte finish, um, especially sort of, you know, in hotter, sweatier uh, times of the year, which is not now, sadly, unfortunately. But there you go. Then I have the Makeup Forever. Uh, this is basically just like their loose powder formulation. I honestly am thinking I'm going to sell this guy because I very rarely use it. I got it originally to go into my kit but I don't do makeup that often anymore and I personally don't use this very often so I think I am actually gonna sell this guy off. But they're good powders. Just FYI. The Benefit Professional Agent Zero Shine. This is um, a really nice powder actually for controlling oil. I took this with me on vacation 
and it was really really good at controlling oil and sweat um, so much so that I find that it's actually a little bit drying um, during the rest of the year so I don't tend to use it but I do like to have it around for travel purposes especially if you know we go down south or during the summer for that matter and it is actually nice and portable because it has that little shaker top and it's got even like a little brush on the bottom which is a really nice option um, again really nice for travel if you want to have a loose powder option so I'm going to keep that guy and then these last two guys the cover effects um, setting powder has a very um, similar texture to the other ones that are kind of silica based in that it's very fun and it disappears into the skin it has a slight sheen to it as well um, which I don't love on my skin on my face in general but it's actually really nice for setting uh, concealer again so I will keep it for that and then the Chanel uh, Poudre Universelle Libre in shade uh, Peche Claire which is peach totally bought by mistake I was not intending to buy this shade and somehow the salesperson either talked me into it or tricked me into it I'm not entirely sure what happened there and I was too embarrassed to return it but it turns out it's actually a really nice powder um, for kind of giving a bit of life to the face and to the skin um, especially again if you know your foundation is maybe just a touch too beige I find this like really helps to kind of brighten it up a little bit plus it's kind of like you know the fancy powder that you have to have and pull out occasionally you know when you want to feel super luxurious and you're using your little Chanel poof and whatnot so I am going to keep it even though I don't use it super super often um, and it is a very nice powder it's uh, it's quite finely milled and it just you know looks really nice on the skin Okay, on to powder foundations. Um, these I like to have um, both on days where I just want to be kind of really quick and lazy and maybe I'm putting on like, you know, a sunscreen or a tinted moisturizer and I just want a little bit of extra coverage, but I don't want to go through a whole, you know, putting on foundation, getting the beauty blender, I just want something quick and fast. Um, so the one I've used for a really long time is the Cargo Blu-ray. Um, as you can tell, this is quite used. Um, I'm actually gonna put that into my project pan and just try finishing it off. I have this Smashbox Halo Foundation, which I actually haven't tried yet. It was one of these um, in a kit things that I bought, so I'm going to put that in my key pile because I do want to try it, obviously. Um, there are a couple foundations, powder foundations that I've been using fairly regularly um, over the past little while. The Kat Von D one and the Makeup Forever one. Um, this one's like a little bit light for me in the summer, but it's perfect for the winter. It actually goes a little bit darker than it appears in the, in the pan. And then the Makeup Forever, which unfortunately arrived where I bought it with the glue kind of not properly glued in but it's actually really nice and convenient because I can travel with it I can just pop it into a Z palette with a couple of blushes and kind of go from there um, they're both fine as far as powder foundations go I find that they're both ever so slightly dry looking on the skin and a little bit obvious when I first put them on it takes like a good half an hour for them to kind of like sink in and see, kind of look seamless with the skin but I think that's also just the nature of powder foundations you know you're applying a product that's quite you know, high coverage and a powder finish. So yeah, I think at the end of the day, I don't love them, but I don't dislike them enough to pass them on, and I do want to have a couple of powder foundations. So until I come across something better, um, these two will stay. Plus, the packaging on this is super cute. I really, really like Kat Von D um, packaging, I gotta say. I'm shallow, I admit it. It's a thing. Um, I just recently actually got the Burberry powder foundation at the Clarence Warehouse sale. I would not have thought to buy it otherwise, but it was like half the price. It was like 20 bucks. So I did get it. Um, I thought it was going to be like a little too dark and a little too peach, but actually it, uh, it applies very well. It does have a super strong smell though, which I really don't like. Um, that's the case I think with all the Burberry powders, which is annoying. But it's actually a really nice powder. I think I like the texture of this better than these. I don't find it looks as dry or as powdery or as obvious on the skin as these guys do. Um, I've only worn it once though, so I can't say for sure, but so far I think I do like it better than these. And if I do actually end up getting more use out of this than these, then I think I'm just going to pass these guys on. Because like I said, they're okay, but I don't love them. And then the ones that I'm for sure going to pass on, this is the Cargo Plant Love Powder Foundation. <laughs> do you guys remember this brand? Um, it came out like years ago when they were trying to be all like green and eco-conscious and um, I think the casing is made out of like or something it's like super biodegradable um, anyway I never use this it's um, I, just, I don't know I just find it looks kind of obviously powdery on the skin and the container is really awkward and messy and annoying and I just you know I'm just done with this guy it's going away the NYX uh, Twin Cake, I'm not entirely sure if this is supposed to be a powder foundation or not, but I always felt like it had more coverage than a pressed powder, and it's kind of awful. Um, it's super dry, um, looking on the skin, um, drying, 
I just don't like this at all. I, you know, committed to using it for a little while, but I'm just going to pass this on because I really can't stand it. And then an oldie. <laughs> this is from a brand called Red Earth, which if you're a Montrealer, you might remember from the boutique that they had downtown back in the day. I think they were owned by Esprit, the clothing chain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they're an Australian brand and they are independent now. They're, you know, their own company, so you can always order from them if you want. But this is a way old foundation, uh, powder foundation that I've had forever. Looks a little chalky on the skin. Don't use it ever. I'm getting rid of it because it's just taking up space at this point. All right, so pressed powder type things. And then the Inglot powder. I think I'm going to pass this one on. Um, I've been using it pretty regularly, but I feel like it doesn't really control the oil that well. And then I end up using more of it than I want to. And it just starts looking a little bit cakey on the skin. So I think I'm going to pass this guy on. This is the Clarins uh, Poudre du Sard. I don't think this is available anymore, or at least not under this format. I got it at the Clarins warehouse sale, so I think it was uh, being liquidated. This is actually a fairly nice powder, and it's got like a very soft texture, so it doesn't look powdery on the skin at all. It's not great for controlling oil, but um, as sort of like a finishing powder, it's actually quite nice. So I am going to keep this guy. This is one of the Marcel um, powders that kind of look like almost like the Givenchy box powders. Um, I think I either got this at the warehouse sale or maybe it was like sent to me at one point. I can't remember. Honestly, I've never used it. So I think I'm going to put it into my pile of things to try out. Um, I have a feeling it's probably going to be kind of middle of the road. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to get too attached to it, I don't think. These are the powders that I, I'm for sure giving away. Um, the Revlon, the Annabelle, and the CoverGirl, uh, Ready, Set, Gorgeous. Um, they're all fine powders, but none of them blew me away, and I just don't want to keep things that I'm not going to use. Uh, this was this was a sample that was sent to me. These guys I bought myself, and I've just, aside from, you know, testing them a few times to review, I've never used them since, so I'm just going to pass them on. So the Bourgeois Eclat Mineral, uh, Mineral Radiance Powder, this is really gross. I really, really hate this film that ends up getting built on this powder as it's used. Um, I think it's like really gross looking and I know it can just be scraped away and used but honestly I find it just really off-putting. Plus the powder itself um, just ends up looking really dry on the skin so that's a no. Getting uh, I think thrown out honestly at this point because it just looks grody. Nobody's gonna want to buy that or you know even if I pass this on to somebody I think they're gonna be just disgusted by it so I think that one's just gonna go into the trash. Okay, then I have this uh, Shuramura powder, which was sent to me, and um, it's really, really pretty. It's very soft and finely milled. Um, it does have a slightly um, kind of reflective quality to it, so I think it's probably um, not quite a highlighter because it's not you know that that shimmery or that light. But I think it probably would be a nice kind of almost highlight powder, like to use maybe just on the cheekbones when you don't want to have necessarily shimmer, but you want to have like a little bit of that brightness. Um, anyway, I, I quite like it, so I'm going to keep that guy. And then my absolute favorite are the Hourglass uh, Ambient Lighting Powders. I think they're a lot of people's favorites for good reason. Um, I have this in Diffused Light, which has a bit of a yellow undertone. This is terrific for setting uh, powder, uh, for setting foundation, sorry, on areas that are like a little bit red because it taps that down and you don't end up having to use quite as much foundation so it keeps the skin looking you know more natural I think at the end of the day um, both these powders I think give a really beautiful natural finish to the skin they don't look obvious on the skin and they give that very natural luminosity which is very very flattering um, not great for controlling oil obviously but if that's not an issue for you um, especially if you have maybe drier skin these are really gorgeous and definitely worth taking a look at I know they were everybody's obsession for a little while but again I think that's for a really good reason and this is basically my untried Pile. These are things I just recently uh, bought, um, so I haven't even had a chance to use them to be honest. Um, so Glory Geller, uh, this was part of the kit I ordered off Outlook. Um, the Lise Wetsier Poutre Dentelle, this is just like a basic pressed setting powder, but it's so pretty. Look at it, it's like a little lace, a little lace design. Um, so yeah, I haven't, even, I haven't even used this, so I'm just going to use that. Uh, Le Métier de Beauté, this is a pressed powder, this is one that I received um, in my subscription box uh, recently, so haven't tried that yet. Really want to because you know most of the Matias stuff is really really nice. The essence all about matte. Um, this is basically like a pressed version of those like silica based powders, 
and I remember Sharon Farrell from Sharon Makeup Artist was talking a lot about how this powder was amazing, so I bought one, haven't used it yet. And then the Stay Matte because I really wanted a pressed powder for oil control um, as an option to the Makeup Forever and the the Professional to have that for, uh, especially for travel, but just to have tucked into my purse. I have not used that yet and still got the plastic on it. And then the Milani uh, Face Powder, I think I got this maybe on clearance or something in the States. Um, I remember it being on sale somehow. I don't know if I ordered it or if I bought it. Anyway, um, largely purchased because of the pretty <laughs> lace detailing um, and like embossed design here, uh, which is kind of a stupid reason obviously to buy powder because you're going to use it a few times and it's going to be gone, but I did not claim to be um, smart um, and I am shallow, so there you go, that's that powder. Um, this is a Smashbox little mini sample that came with an order of one of their pressed powders. I'm going to pass this on because this is way too light for me. So I'm going to pass this on to my best friend, I think. And then the Bare Minerals uh, Translucent Touch of Veil. Um, I bought this a while ago, I think, when they were having a sale and I never used it. Um, but I'm going to give that a try because I really, really like the eyeshadows and the blushes and the bronzers that um, they have from this line now. So I'm really curious to see if this is any good. Um, and it does have sunscreen, titanium dioxide, so that actually might be really great to be able to uh, boost my sunscreen. Because honestly, during the winter, I very rarely wear sunscreen, which I know is so bad, but I just can't make myself do it when <laughs> it's like barely any sunshine here. Um, so it's nice to be able to maybe have like that in my foundations and powders. So yeah, so that's not too bad actually. This is what I'm going to be keeping. And this is what I'm giving away and or throwing away. So that's not bad. It's actually a lot better than I was expecting. I'm going to do some wrapping up. I'm going to give you guys a final count. Um, but that is it for my powders. Thank you for sticking with me um, through this decluttering process. I know I had to take a little bit of a break. But um, I'm very, very excited to keep going with this. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the series as well. Anyway, talk to you guys soon.